My Discord server now has a section dedicated to Medieval Dynasty. If you'd like to join, there's a link in the description. On top of that, we have a section up here in roles where you can join the Kaizen Squad. And if you do so, you'll get a ping on Discord every time I go live and every time I post a video. So you can make sure you don't miss any videos if that interests you. And if you'd like to see my videos before anybody else, you can, of course, join the channel as a member. Members do get to see my videos a few hours or sometimes longer before anybody else. A big thank you to all my current channel members. And if you're interested in joining, a link to that will also be in the description. Our focus for today is going to be farming and that's why we're over here at the farm and the reason for that well there are a few reasons for that but one of them is because we are here in spring we've got this massive field here that is completely ready to harvest this is all wheat up here and we also have this massive field here that has nothing growing in it just yet and the last episode we did make a ton of money but we want to press on with that because money will be spent uh, more and more as we progress through the game and it is something that we're going to need so i'm going to go ahead and harvest all of these fields right here uh, and the uh, other reason that we want to get this done like sort of early on we equip our bag and not our fists is because we are in spring guys and as you can see here are options for planting things Basically, everything apart from right can be planted at this time of year. So that's what I'm going to do, and this will be mostly off-camera work. Before I start farming, actually, one thing I'm going to do is speak to this lady right here, and she's got all the tools and weapons that we could ever need. Now, what I want to look at are the scythes right here. So we've got a bronze scythe, for example. We can buy that for 500 coins. Now, these will do a much larger area when we're farming uh, than what we're using at the moment, which is the sickle. You see the sickle over here, copper sickle. We've been using that. So we've got bronze scythe. Let's see, is there an iron scythe too? There is indeed, and this iron scythe is 650. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy one of those for 650. Uh, because we have a ton of coins, we still have 8,000 coins after that. And what I'll do now is head back to the farm and let's see the difference between mining, uh, mining, uh, farming, I should say, with the scythe versus the sickle. We want to be more productive because we've got these huge farms and we need to get through them as quickly as we can. Now that we're back at the farm, let's go ahead and equip the copper sickle. And you can see that if you stand in between two crops like this, and it's a little tricky as you see right there, you can kind of get these two crops in a row, right? So you can kind of do two at a time. I often find I miss and get just the one though. Now, I know that the iron scythe does a larger area um, and, and any scythe does, but I don't know how much. Let's see, if we just mine this. Okay, yeah, this does seem to be a lot better actually. I'm guessing it's like significantly quicker. And actually, if I just hold down left click and walk forwards, ah, okay, that seems to be the way to do that. We just unlock food storage too, as you see right there too. So let's go right the way through like this. Oh, we made it like, yeah, quite a big line there. Now we can go and just tidy this one up as well. And it seems that if we just keep holding it down and walking forwards, it's synced up to be in the right timing where we don't actually miss any. This is definitely a lot quicker than, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's get that one as well. All right, so we've done these, this whole row right here. Uh, and you see the durability of it over on the right-hand side. That's the only thing I'm a little bit sort of concerned about is the durability. Is it going to last us very long because we have such big farms? And we're not able to make these things yet. I have to buy them. At 6.50 a time, we wouldn't want to buy more than like one a season, I wouldn't think. Uh, I'm actually missing some bits here too. Now, actually, what I'll do is the bits I miss, I'll go back around and get those bits that I miss with the sickle rather than using the scythe on that because it's just using durability. And uh, yeah, I guess we, we'd be better to do that. I'm not sure if the durability is the same every swing, regardless of the number of like items that you're farming with each swing. But just in case it is, it's better to do it that way. Anyway, this is definitely going to be quicker and a lot better. So that's going to be uh, something we're going to use more and more of in the future now that we're progressing on to these better tools. I was just doing a really big crafting project and I've had a bit of a thought, guys. So I just wanted to mention this on, on camera. Basically, I'm going to turn off the uh, crafting times. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I feel like it will enable us to advance the series a lot quicker. And I think for the sake of the entertainment value of this series, it's better for me to spend my time like building and making a new town and stuff like that, rather than just grinding out you know, a lot of time spent on resources, because we're getting to that stage of the game now where we're making things in bulk. So if we go to customize games in here somewhere, let me just go ahead and find that. And that's what we're going to do. Yeah, here we go. Fast crafting right here. So we're just going to check that and turn that on. I'm not going to do the other stuff for now, I think, but I want to keep the survival element of this game and I want to try and keep it, you know, looking pretty good uh, in terms of like pretty close to how the game is meant to be played, if you like. Uh, I just think that for certain things when I'm crafting, it's just kind of silly to be spending all my time doing that. So let's see, this is fast crafting should now be on. Is it going to do all 59 in this one go? I've not actually used this before, so I'm not sure how this works. Uh, yes, okay, it does it like that. Um, so wanted to make sure I mentioned this on cam. Don't want to feel like I'm doing anything, you know, secretive or whatever in this regard. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on this, guys. If it's really, uh, like, if you guys are really against this, then I'll consider going back to doing everything uh, on the slow crafting. 
But I think the other thing with this as well is it does now enable the possibilities of doing some live streams because the main thing that was uh, when I thought about streaming this in the past, I'm like, I can do it, but it's not going to be super fun for you guys to watch if the live stream entails me making up stuff for like, you know, 10, 20 minutes at a time. Yeah. So uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that, guys, so that you guys are aware of what we're doing. As you can see, I'm, I made up a load of animal feed right here. So we we're able to feed up uh, all of the animals to 100 percent, potentially. They're all 100% right now, apart from the geese. Let's see, do they get to 100% too or not? Uh, they do. Okay, so that's going to last us now ages. We won't have to worry about feeding the animals for a very long time, which is nice. Um, so yeah, do let me know your thoughts, but I think this is a good way to progress for the rest of the series. In the last episode, of course, we made the fishing hut just down here, and I had a comment uh, from Suzanne and Epic Virus, so a couple of comments actually, saying that in the management section, one thing I forgot to do is something I forget a lot, and I wanted to mention it today. You go into the fishing hut, you need to make sure you assign the tasks. And I have now done so. I did it in between episodes. But I wanted to mention it. And the reason I wanted to mention it is because I think a lot of people might forget to do this. You build the building, you assign the person, you think you're good. But you have to tell them what you want them to catch. Now, what I've done here is tried to go for a bit of a mixed bunch. So we get half a pike a day because even on 100%, it doesn't even get us to one or maybe it gets us just above one. It was like pretty low. We're going to get one perch a day and get six and a half of the roach. That seems like a good balance for now. Obviously, you guys can do your own things. But I wanted to mention that because uh, some of you might have forgotten too. So yeah, that's that mention. And thank you to those who commented. Now, something else I'd like to look at is building some new traps. If we go to the trap section here, we have uh, a bird trap, which we can buy there for 80. So let's go ahead and buy that. And we also have a rat trap, which we can buy for 200. Now, these sound quite interesting, and they only require sticks and stones in order to build. So they're very cheap to build. Now, I don't think I've ever trapped a rat in this game, but trapping the birds will also be good. So let's go ahead and grab out like a load of stuff here. Don't know how much we'll need, but we'll just try and grab like too much and then we can put it back at the end. But you see, we're doing quite well on resources. That's going to be really useful for us once we get to the point of looking to build up our new town, which we're actually going to come on to later on in today's episode. So under traps, let's see, uh, let's do a bird trap. And I don't think it necessarily matters where we put them. So let's put all the traps together at the front of our house here so we can have that one there. <laughs> I guess they just fill up in the same way that the rabbit trap does. And uh, oh, I'm not uh, I'm trying to fight someone by the looks of it, but what we actually want to do is go back here and get the rat trap. And looks like we can only place one of each of these things as well. Let's just put that down there for now, kind of arbitrary. Um, is that, that is armed, okay. They're all armed, ready to go. So we'll see how those go throughout the game. I believe that when we get things out of traps, it does level up our hunting skill, which if you watch the previous episode, you'll know is something I want to work on at the moment anyway. So I think that's a pretty good idea. Now, what I'm going to do is go and get our noble steed, Claude, who hasn't been ridden in a little while, but he is now needed once again. So let's jump on Claude, and he's going to be our transportation. We're going to head off to our new town area. So once again, I always struggle with horses, but there we go. We open up the map right here. Then we just need to find the location for it. And I think it is, let me see. Yeah, okay, it's just down here. There's the resource stories that we built before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head down there. I'm going to start to plan out this town and get some building done on this town. So what the plan is, is I'm going to make up a lot of different uh, roads, the gravel roads, because they're free to make. And what it will do is just give us a bit of a layout that we can then build to. Slight problem, guys. I was involved in a horse crash on the way to uh, the town, and nothing seems to be working in terms of getting him to us. I'm wondering if we go far enough away. My goodness, that looks painful. Uh, if we go far enough away and keep whistling, will he just kind of teleport to us? Uh, I'm hoping so. Otherwise, I'm not sure how we're going to get him on start. Oh, here he is. He's over here. I was kept whistling, and I was looking uh, back this way where he crashed, but now he's over here. So that's what you have to do, I guess, if you get him stuck like that, is just go far enough away and then keep whistling. Uh, so kind of funny. Thought I'd mention it. Let's carry on now onto the town. So this is the area for our town. Here is the resource stories that we built before, the wonderful waterfall just there. And one really nice feature that has returned to the game is if we press escape here. Then you'll see we have this, the photo mode. Now, in order to access photo mode, we need to be out like this. So if you press escape now and go into photo mode, I think this should work. There we go. Okay, here we go. So from up here, you can see there's the waterfall. Really, really nice. And uh, we've got like some land up there that we could potentially build on for sure. Down here, we've got the main road in and out of the town. And then over here, we've got all this stuff going on. Now, I believe that uh, a few people have commented and said that we're not able to fish in this lake around here. So that's okay. It's not the end of the world. What I think we just need to do is think about uh, what we can do. And I think that's a lot of farming. So having a lot of farms out and around here could be a, a nice idea. Um, but then also like long term, I'd like to have town walls and stuff like that. So maybe the farms would be outside the walls. So I have a fly around, come up with a plan, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do. Having had a look around, I've got a bit of a plan for the town now. And this may change over time. The town may evolve over time, and that's absolutely fine. But here's what I think. We've got this bridge over here that goes across the water. And over there is a mine. So later on, we can definitely build a mine there. And in the meantime, we can do our own mining there. So what I like is this road that we've got over here that goes from there just down this way like this. 
from like either side of that we could build houses we could have some really nice houses here like this along the river if we clear those trees and they're kind of protected they've got the river on one side they've got the cliffs and stuff up there and where this structure is right here i'm not sure if we're able to take this down or not in game but we might better do something with that and theme it or something because it's going to be overlooking this whole area right here so for the initial sort of uh, areas of residential areas we could build down here and that's how we get people into our town so now that we are out of the photo mode let's run over and see what this actually looks like in game this is the area that i'm talking about so there's the bridge there going over like that and just over here we can just run across this river you can see we could take down these trees and things We've got a nice flat area to build on right here right next to the mines and stuff and uh, this could be where people live at the start of our town. I was noticing as well, let's say we've got some stuff over here that we can loot. That's pretty good. So we've got 52 coins there for doing nothing. Uh, we always like that. And I know that every time I loot places, there are things that I miss. And I get comments about it all the time. So yeah, I guess it's not my strong point in the game. I do try, but I seem to miss things. So a little tip to you guys is to do make sure... When you're looting these things, you have a better look than I do because uh, clearly I miss out on things. Now, I have been using my bow and arrow. Let's see if we can hit that little bird that's running just over there. This has been something I've been doing for hunting, and there we go. I do find it easier than the spear, but it took some getting used to, I found. Um, oh, we don't have a knife on us. I'll sort that in a second then. Yeah, uh, so uh, the bow and arrow seems pretty cool, though. We'll have to try out the crossbow soon as well. So what I'm going to do is clear a load of trees and stuff like that in this area right now, and we'll look to start making uh, some things up. Now, one thing I was thinking is that just down this end would be a really nice spot for our house, potentially, um, because we want our house to be the nicest, right? Because we're living in it. <laughs> so what I was thinking is if we had our house here, we have a bit of a backyard right next to the river and the bridge with a waterfall in the backdrop. I think that could be really, really nice. Uh, and again, this might change over time. But that's what my plan is for now. So we're going to start by taking trees down over here and then build like a line down here. And this will be our residential street right down here. We don't even need to build the gravel road. It's already in the game for us, which is really nice. I have now taken down some trees and things, and it actually reveals the view even uh, better, as you can see here. So it's going to be really nice. What I was looking at is if I go to buildings and we go to houses, our production's not far off the 1500 required to make the top level house in the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us like uh, the ability to see how large that's going to be. But what I think I'll do is leave some space for that down here, and that'll be our house, the sort of big house right on the end. And we can start a residential street from about here. So let's go into houses once again. And we're gonna build simple houses. We're gonna try and make the houses really nice for everybody uh, on, on this street here. And maybe we'll do like uh, some upgrades later on once we've unlocked that. But by doing this, it will hopefully unlock the big house for us. So I think what we wanna do is let's place like one down here. That's great. And the good thing is that we can build these houses uh, let's get another, uh, oh, no, not that one. Let's get the better one. Uh, and we can basically build them and lay them out without needing to actually build them out yet, right? We can just put them down on the floor and see where they're going to go. So, for example, this one will be able to play, place there. We just need to take this down, which I'll do right now. But in doing this, we're going to be able, of course, to plan out like the town a little bit better. And actually, as I'm talking, I've had a better idea. I think I've had a better idea. You know what? Let me do uh, a couple of things here, and then I'll show you my better idea. All right, let's grab our hammer. Uh, and this one right here, what we want to do is destroy it. I don't want to build this here. It was a change of plan. What I think I'm going to do is make a little neighborhood because that could be a bit more fun. So let's go into the building once again and go back to the, uh, the simple house. But let's place it like this. So it's got it's facing in this way with its back to there. Uh, and let's go about there. I want to give some space around the houses. I'm thinking what we could do here is uh, that's going to be too much actually but we can do some decorational stuff so let's just take that down a second and uh, there's a bit of trial and error involved here when we're doing the building uh, so we can get things right so this does need to go a bit closer to the thing uh, so we'll put it like there the space can go in, in here but that should leave enough space for us over there for our house and if not we'll figure something else out then what we're going to do is go back to houses and get the simple house again we want this one placed down like here somewhere right so let's see if there's a good spot here we can find yeah just about there should be fine right so there's that one there that one there and then a third one just over here let me go ahead and take down uh some of this stuff first because it's going to be in the way but you can see what i'm doing then we'll have a nice little courtyard here for those three houses there'll be three families that can live there and uh, that would be kind of a, a nice way of doing it i think i'm just lining up my houses here and i come up with a little bit of a tip because i want to try and get them as straight as possible uh so basically if we hold our hammer right now and we go on to destroy then these will uh, show up red these are the plots of the houses you see that there is the stick for the outer uh, sort of perimeter of the build but this here is the actual house and that's obviously what we want to line up so now if we press q and we go on to the houses select like the simple house when we go to line this up once it gets into the green what we need to do is line up the green of that new house with the red of the other one so roughly about there let's see how close i can get this okay so you can see that that was pretty close right this is a little bit off i don't mind it being a little bit off because this is like meant to be medieval times i think it adds a bit more realism to it and stuff like that i might move this i might not but the point is it's a lot easier to do that 
than without. If I just go ahead, in fact, and destroy this right now, I'll, I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about. So if we get rid of the hammer, then these things go away. Now when I go to buildings and houses and try to place it down, we don't have that. We still have the green, so we can try and sort of guess where it's going to be. And I'd probably guess it's going to be like there. And uh, actually, I think I got that one better. <laughs> That's just because I had some previous practice. But you guys, if you play in this game, you'll understand what I'm saying. Hopefully, that'll be a little bit of a tip there to help you out. In the end, I decided to go with a bigger neighborhood. So what we have here is one house down the end there, then one, two, three in the middle here, and a final one on this end here. So we've created a nice sort of U-shape or N-shape, I guess, depends on how you look at it, with this big square in the middle where we can put all kinds of different things. So we could put things like wells and useful buildings like that or just decorational stuff. I've left the tree stumps that are in the middle here. We're going to let those regrow and then over time develop this middle bit and see how we want it to look. But I think this is quite a nice way of doing it. Hopefully you guys will agree with me on that. Uh, so now it's a case of needing to build them, of course, and uh, we can go ahead and start taking a look at that. Um, the foundations are all going to be stone, so we'll get that done. But when it comes up to the uh, walls and things, people have suggested I build some stone houses and things like that. We do have like 700 stone at the moment too, so it could be kind of nice. Oh, and actually while we've got the outlines on, I'll show you here as well. This house on the end is up on stilts a little bit, you can see right here. So this is going to require some logs for the foundation and then uh, you know some other stuff on top. But I think that's kind of nice because you've got these houses, they're slightly at different heights, slightly different orientations, has a medieval feel to it. But what we're basically making here is a nice medieval neighborhood, and I think that's kind of a nice way of going. And it will provide the housing needs for our town, which is going to be across the river there, and some little bits of stuff going on here too. We're back at the town, and I managed to have another donkey crash. <laughs> so I've ended up face down in the dirt once again. Uh, however, what I'm hoping right now is that all of our traps are ready to be collected, and they are. So, bird trap, that's like one third durability used up each time. Let's go and collect that. What do we get from that? 11 feathers and two meat. Not bad for basically a freebie. And the rabbit trap, we know all about that. We get the fur and we get the meat from that. Not bad. But how about the rat trap? Look at this, guys. We've not used this before. So from the rat trap, we're getting just two meat. No fur or anything from that. Uh, wait, is that? Oh, it did rearm, I guess. Okay, there we go. So it's just more free meat, basically, for us. And uh, we don't mind that at all. What I'm going to do now is have a sleep, and when it gets back to daytime, do a bit of a time lapse of that neighborhood being built. I think that could be cool because we're going for so many buildings all in the one place. So hopefully that will look good on cam. We've got our resource storage over there nearby as well, and uh, hopefully we've got enough stuff on us that we can actually build all this stuff up. But let's find that out together. Uh, one thing I might do just before I head over there is make some uh, planks up. I was thinking. Uh, I think we, we will need planks for the uh, for the builds. And right now we've got 31, which is good. We've got 148 logs though. So let's turn like say 25 of those logs. Let's go, let's just do more. Let's do, let's go for 30, 30 of those logs. All right, we're gonna grab those on, oh, I can't move. All right, I'll figure this out and that's what we're gonna do next. Now that we have the foundations built, you can actually see how this neighborhood is taking shape a little better. And I think it looks really, really nice, actually. Hopefully you guys agree on that. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about now is some of the options that we have. So when we go up to these walls right here, we can just start building them as they are with logs and sticks, or we can press E and edit them. Now, then you can go for walls, walls with windows, and walls with doors. So what I think we'll do here is we'll try and have each house a little bit different. So let's just start down this end, I suppose, and we'll build this one as is. So for example, this is a wall with window, so press edit, we'll go wall with window, and then we've got these options. We can go wattle, we can go wooden, or we can go stone. And we're gonna to look to go stone because a few people have said about that and using up the stone, and I do think it's a good idea. Now, it looks like what you need to do is actually do this for each uh, panel, right? So it doesn't do it for the entire build. So this is a wattle wall with doors, so we're gonna go onto that, go walls with doors, and go stone wall with door. So we're gonna do that the whole way around, and I'm gonna do that for each of them, but I just wanted to show you the process in case this is something that you haven't done before, and then we'll get back to the time lapse of the build, uh, which actually will be right now, so enjoy that. <laughs> Yeah. 
Our neighborhood is now built, as you can see, and unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the best weather <laughs> for the uh, christening of this, but I thought I'd have a look around with it like this nonetheless, because uh, obviously we're always against the time on this game, trying to be as efficient as we can, so I don't want to just wait around for sun. Uh, but this is what we've got. We've got three houses in here, and then one on either end. You'll see that I went for a couple different designs, uh, designs I should say. So this one here, this one, and that one there are all stone, whereas this one here and that one over there are wood, and they've got the wooden roofs, whereas the others all have the uh, it's a wooden tiled roof, I think it's called, which takes a lot more planks and stuff like that. We've also done the orientation a bit different. So this has got like one window at the front. This one has two. This one has none. This one again has two. Uh, I tried to uh, do different designs in all different areas. So this one's got two windows on the side wall, which kind of makes sense because if we actually run up inside of this house, these windows overlook this right here, the little river and stuff like that, and that will be the town over there. So if you're going to have windows in this house, that's where you'd want them to be. Uh, and then, you know, just went for different designs around the back as well. So if we go around the back of these houses, you'll see that they are indeed uh, all different. Uh, so there's two there on the right, one either side and one in the middle. So yeah, just randomly did that. And I think that's uh, going to be quite nice. These trees here will regrow, as I said, and we might keep those. Um, and I want to decorate this area in general. It's not something that I've got around to doing today. I just think it could be nice to do that on a live stream because then you guys can actually get involved with suggestions, ideas, and stuff like that. And if you'd like to see that live stream, you want to make sure you don't miss that. The best way to do that is to subscribe. And also you can join my Discord linked in the description. And uh, then you'll be able to get notified when I go live on there too. So our new town is off to a good start, guys. I just want to say thank you again for supporting this series. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.